walk up to Big Cork Vineyards, you'll see the big sign. It's a perfect photo opportunity. Big Cork has a gorgeous building. You'll walk up the steps and someone will be there to get your information if you made a reservation or what you're here for, and they'll walk you through it. And then you'll enter the main building. You do have to wear masks and social distance, as is the norm right now. But you walk into this gorgeously laid out store. They have the best smelling candles here, FYI. And then on one side will be the tasting bar and on the other will be indoor seating where you can sit down and take a look, purchase some wine to drink and take a look at this awesome penny mural. We'll also show you the barrel room. This is where the sparkling wine class was held. It's so cool to be backstage where the wine is actually made, and Big Cork does fantastic at setting up events. I mean, look at this table layout. It is so cute, and we had a wonderful time. Welcome back to Uncork with Shannon and Tara. So today we traveled to Big Cork Vineyards. To we're do back. Yeah. <laughs> we came here before, but we're back again to do the sparkling tasting event. Um, so the sparkling tasting included food and wine pairings, and it was all sparkling wines, which you know we love very much. Um, so we tasted a cava, a prosecco, a champagne, and big cork sparkling wine, and then a welcome wine, which we're still not sure the details about. They came from Texas, and we loved it. We want to get a bottle, and it was so good. We're all about it. <laughs> I took like three pages of notes on the sparkling did. wine. I was like the whole time just like, yes, I know. yes, yes. While well, I was eating away, she was like, the whole time. Yeah. Um, uh, did it die? No. no. <laughs> oh. So, um, sparkling wine is our favorite and Big Cork is gorgeous. As you see, we're sitting outside this time. Um, it's they, warm enough to sit outside. Oh my God. It's spring. Um, so we did try five sparkling wines with food pairings. Did you talk about the food pairings? Yeah, they had fries in duck fat, which we were at first a little um, nervous about because we didn't know about duck fat, but it was really good. We also had a barbecue chicken. So I had a quick picture. Yeah. And I'm oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Got the tech picture. Should you turn it for me? First. And perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so for the food, there was a um, fries with duck fat, uh, which was cooked in duck fat. And it was actually pretty good. We were a little nervous about that at first. Uh, barbecue chicken um, slider. That was really good. Uh, mac macaroni and cheese with like I think a little bit of bacon. A little bit. So good. So good. Oh, my favorite, the arugula salad. It pairs so well with all of the different um, wines. It had a good balsamic sauce in there. Yeah, it had a light. Andrew says creamy. It was light. That's yeah, so I don't know what the dressing was. It was, was I'm not eating. I don't like dressing on my salad. I know it's weird. I like eating raw lettuce, whatever. But I don't like dressing. Oh, that good. balsamic was amazing. Bang it. Oh, Bang it. Corn dog with a mustard and ketchup drizzle, which was very well paired with a couple of the wines. We have stars to Andrew. Yeah. I'm, this is my first time trying a corn dog. I knew I wasn't going to like it. I just, I don't think I like the idea of Yeah. I'm super picky in general, so I was very excited about the french fries uh, and the comfort food in general. I'm not into fancy food at all, so this like finger food was fantastic pairing with sparkling wine because yeah. they did say in the beginning of this that sparkling wine has a tendency to be paired with like, like caviar. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. not what you're gonna pull out when you pop a bottle of prosecco. Like, yeah. oh, I just have this can of caviar in my fridge ready to be ready. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna make you microwave mac and cheese, and you're gonna like it. Oh, <laughs> mac and cheese sounds amazing with it. So you can pair yeah. mac and cheese, French fries, like you can pair everyday foods with sparkling wine. You 
that here everyday foods with sparkling wine like sparkling wine is they even said it they said celebrate every day every moment so pop a bottle when you're ready like there's no occasion too big or too small to pop a bottle of sparkling wine and pair it with comfort food that's what i love about this winery it wasn't like so uptight where you're like yeah, let me go to the store to get caviar, or like, what store do I need to go to to get caviar? Like, you can pair it with mac and cheese. You can get Kraft mac and cheese, which is microwavable, ready in three and a half minutes, and you're good to go. And I'm more likely to eat that than caviar, <laughs> yeah. so. I don't need caviar. I don't need it. I'm a little nervous to ever try it. Yeah, I but may try it, but I don't need it. You're kind of on sushi. We are... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we are now... Quotation mark on sparkling wine. I mean, I I know all the regions. There's France. There's a region in France. There's a region in Spain. There's a region of Italy. Like, look at all Lots of these. Of notes. Lots of notes. I now know that like varieties are different between France and Spain, and Cava is different from Champagne and Prosecco. I know all of that now. It's all yeah. here. I might remember it. And now I know the traditional method versus the new way method. It's very like traditional and the new way is tank. Which they also said that sparkling wine is way more um, costly to produce. It is. Yeah. It's like a $20,000 tank to produce this. And that's just the tank that you need. So that's not accounting all of like the additional hardware that they need to like, they need a counter pressure filler for the bottle. like. We need a lot of extra equipment for this. So yeah. it's very costly to produce sparkling wine versus regular wine, which I kind of see that. Because sparkling wine, you feel there's like there's like this... Um, More fancy wine. Yeah. yeah. And regular wine, I mean, Old West Minister gave us, like, these are all the wine that we bought you together as, like, the castaways. Or, like, yeah. the extras. Like, you can just blend those extras together and come up with a wine. But for sparkling, there's a very specific method that you have to go about it, and it's more costly. It is. Which is why you pay more. Yeah. Per bottle. But I like that Big Corp sees that this is a trend in millennials and like the upcoming drinking yeah. group that like we like sparkling wines. So they're like, wow, this next group likes sparkling wines. We need to figure out how to make it. They did. And this is their first batch, and I think they really did a great job. They knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Their, their um, sparkling wine is so good. We each bought, you bought two, I bought one. Like, they said it's selling faster than they ever thought before, and it's just, the younger generation likes sparkling wine. They do, yeah. I mean, there was um, a different age group in our tasting class where, like, the older people just didn't understand, like, um, why the younger group likes the sparkling. I don't think they understood it. But, like, us, if you follow our videos, we really do like sparkling wines. Why would you think you like sparkling wine? Why do I think I like yes. this? <laughs> I don't know. So I don't drink soda, so I feel like this is the only time I get the bubbliness. Yeah. And I just feel like every time there's a celebration, I just wanted to pop open a bottle. And I think hearing the pop noise and like having that bubbly taste is just like, it's a celebration. It's a party time. Whole vibe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I definitely think so. Why do you think you like it? I think I like it because sparkling does um, trend towards more dry, which yeah. we both said we like drier wines. Um, so I do think it's very easy to drink, which I like very easy to drink. And it feels lighter, even though it probably isn't. It probably hits me like 10 times harder than regular it wine. It does, but it's probably less calorie. Which like, is like 100 calorie. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for the lighter feel, the bubbly feel. I, I think the same reason. Like, I just feel like I'm drinking something lighter and, like, celebration -y. Yeah. Yeah. So I think millennials like celebration. Um, in this wine tasting, we tasted the Cava, the Champagne, the Prosecco, the Texas, and then theirs. We definitely, out of all five, we really like the Texas, the Cava. No, the Prosecco. Oh, the Prosecco. And theirs. Yeah. Actually, theirs was like pretty good. It was a very apple, grainy apple. Green taste. apple, citrusy flavor. Yeah. The Texas one was a Shannon. Oh, Blanc. Chenin Blanc. Yes. Okay, nice. so when they were saying, yeah, oh, Chenin Blanc, I was like, oh, Chenin Blanc. It is Chenin Blanc. Yeah. It is awful, Chenin Blanc. Oh, yeah.
a Texas Chinamog <laughs> But I'm very, I do like Savion Blanc, Chenin Blanc. I love all of that. So we're good. It was so good. We got a picture of it. We're probably going to buy it. Yeah, we're going to go back and uh, we also tasted the rosé. It was great. It's very 